Folks, you know it's funny how things in your life often connect when you don't really expect it. You know, ideas and concepts, they seem to find you here and there in a short time span. For instance, in our Sunday school class recently, we've had a couple of lessons that both emphasize the power of God's voice, you know, the power of God's word to do anything. And then in a small group I'm part of, we've been reading this book by R.C. Sproul called The Holiness of God, and he discusses the very same idea. You know, back in Sunday school, it was two episodes where we discussed Jesus' commands that restored life. And one was the story where the Roman centurion asked Jesus only to say the word and his servant would be healed. And Jesus, of course, was amazed by his faith because this was a Roman who knew somehow that Jesus had the power to heal even from a distance. And compare that to Lazarus' sister, Martha. In John eleven twenty one, Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. She seemed to believe that Jesus' power was limited to his physical location. If you had been here, she said. But the centurion knew no matter where Jesus was, his voice, his command had power. And R.C. Sproul discusses the power of Jesus' words, not only to heal or to restore life, but also to create life and to create literally everything that exists out of nothing. Now, let me say that again. Jesus, the Son, along with the Father and the Holy Spirit, the three persons of the triune God, they created everything that exists out of nothing. Ex nihilo, the saying goes, out of nothing. You know, we can't even really imagine nothing. You know, we could picture being in empty space, like in the space between Earth and Mars. <clears throat> but that's still space in which you can move around in. It's something. It's not nothing. Nothing is literally no thing. Nothing. According to Sproul, this power to create is called the divine imperative or the divine fiat. No, not a holy tiny car, but the implementation of God's will. The word fiat is Latin and it's based in the verb to be, like our be, is, are, am, and so on. In Latin, the beginning of Genesis 1-3 reads, fiat lux, let there be light. And of course, the rest of that verse goes, and there was light. Now friends, that is power. Besides God, nothing existed, not even light, but God's voice, his command made it be. He let it be and it was. God created light and everything that exists ex nihilo, out of nothing. And we know that Jesus works together with the Father in the Spirit to create everything that exists. John tells us that all things were made through him, and without him, not anything was made that was made. Folks, some of you may be saying, that's great and all, but maybe you just don't realize what this means to you right now. How does this apply to what you're dealing with at the moment? Some of you have recently lost really close loved ones, and you're hurting. Some of you are dealing with depression or anxiety, financial troubles, or just worry about the future. But if we really take a second to realize just how powerful, just how potent Jesus' word is to make things be, spirits can be lifted when we connect that idea with other words that he says. Like for instance, when Jesus tells us, come to me all you who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Or when Jesus says, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. What about when Jesus says, in my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And finally, Jesus says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Friends, family, I know that you've got suffering. I know that every one of you has some kind of heartache and worry. But hear the powerful voice of Jesus. Realize just how powerful it is. And believe that the promise that he has made to you and to everyone who puts their trust in him, your sufferings, as terrible as they may seem, can't compare to the abundant life and joy and peace that he has in store for you. And that is available to you right now when you lean on him 
when you take his yoke that is easy and his burden that is light, and when you hear and believe his word, his voice, if you're looking for healing, if you're looking for peace, if you're longing for relief, hear Jesus saying to you, let it be. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for your powerful voice, your powerful command that calls everything into existence and that can make everything we need be. Lord, we ask you, take our burdens. Help us, give us your yoke that's easy and light, Lord. Please, Lord, we give it all to you, just with everyone whose heart is hurting right now. Please give us your love and your peace. Help us when we need you most, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much, Victor family. I hope you have a wonderful week.